All right, this is our introduction video to Gloomhaven. I know you guys cannot see this map very well. Um, what we are actually going to do with this game, me and my son are actually playing two characters each on this game. And because of that, it takes a little while for each turn, which you're trying to pick your cards and what you want to do during your turn. We're not going to really show a playthrough of this game unless you really want us to. But what we are going to do is keep a journal. And what we'll do is we'll talk about all the things that happen when we go to Gloomhaven. Like retiring, leveling up, um, getting, getting ability cards, Doing the city events. Doing city events. And anything that takes place in Gloomhaven. Like donating to the sanctuary. Right. We'll also be doing, uh, we'll should be showing you guys um, the road events. You know, we'll pick our battle goals. We'll show you what the scenario looks like set up using, you know, these tiles when we set up the scenarios with the different monsters on them. And then we'll show you what it looks like. When, and then we'll pause it there, then we'll put it back on when the battle's over with. And tell you a little bit about what happened. With, that's why it doesn't spoil too much for you. And the videos aren't super long. Alright. The game Gloomhaven itself. The first thing you gotta do is you kinda pick characters. And when you start, you have six characters to choose from. Um, and they come in these little character boxes with a symbol on them. And inside this box, you will find a player mat. You will have um, these cards. Those are called ability cards. Every character has their own set of ability cards. Now, this is very important, these cards, because ability cards. You can see they're all different. Every one of these cards are different for, for every character. And this will allow you to move, attack, do all sorts of stuff. This is why the turns take a little while and we don't want to show you a playthrough unless you want us to. Because you have to decide two cards every turn to play. And that can be a little time consuming. We'll talk about that more in a minute. And you gain more cards as you level up. For example, these are the cards I have right now. But eventually, as I level up even more, these are the cards that I'll be able to choose from. Yes, and all those cards come in this in in this in the box, matching, you know, whoever like like this guy goes with this. All, all that stuff comes in these boxes. And in the boxes, you will find something that looks like this. These are this called. This is your character sheet. Yep. And every you character will, has one of these. You will record notes down here. Notes can be when you do a battle goal, you'll have you'll get to pick and it'll have one or two check marks on it. When you get a check when you complete your battle goal, you'll earn that many check marks. Check the check marks off in one of the three boxes. Once you complete three boxes, you may choose one of these perks to add to your attack modifier deck. Well, uh, this is attack modifier deck. Every character and monster gets one of these. All characters start with a set of 20. And these, again, these will come in your... Well, these will come in the main box, the, the original set, but then there'll be other cards that you can add to your character as you get perks. But these come in the box. Um, you see these little tokens come in the box, and then these things keep track of uh, of like things on ability cards and stuff. You can also get XP. Well, let's just talk about what comes in the All box, right. the white box. What comes in the box? Yeah. And on this character sheet, you can like record like everything you get and 
have. We'll talk about that in a minute. We'll go in detail. All right. So what we got? You got your character mat. You got your character sheet. You got your ability cards. You get these little tokens. And also there are smaller character boxes that include these figures on them. Right, but that's not in that box I originally showed. This comes in a separate little box, but they'll they'll match. You have like this guy, this symbol. You'll find this symbol on a little box, and inside the little box will be the miniature. What else comes in that box? Anything? Um. Yeah. Besides that, will come certain cards you can add to your. Attack modifier. Yeah, modifier, attack modifier. Yeah. Where are all those? They are all in here, right? Um, the rest of them are in... Oh, okay, yes. Yeah. So, this is what basically comes in a, a, a box. You get you get some special... And, and a lot of these ability modifier cards that come in a box, that's going to customize your character. That's going to... E each box will have different ability modifiers. There are then the attack modifiers can go from minus two to plus two, and they can even go well, from even higher, I think, because you have a plus three on here, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they can pretty much go minus or plus pretty much anything, and they can even do no damage or double the damage they would originally do. Well, we'll talk about that in a second. Nope, I'm just showing everybody what's in the box. So this is what all comes in a box. In the character box. All this kind of stuff. And there's several more of these little tokens. Now, the character sheet itself, what my son was saying. Get that pencil. Here's where you're keeping track of your battle goals. And like you said, there's boxes of three. There's rows of three. Once you get one filled, you can choose one of these perks. And each of these perks are different and special and unique for each character. And then that's when you'll take the special perk, find it in your, your deck, and then add it to your ability modifier deck. And, and it makes it more powerful. Sometimes it'll add cards add positive cards and sometimes it'll remove negative cards. Yeah, you do all kinds of things with these perks. You definitely want to do those. Then you got your level and your amount of hit points. Um, it keeps track of your experience, keeps track of your gold, and you just got notes for and accomplishing your personal goal or whatever. And with your level, certain cards will give you experience. You can also get bonus experience just for completing the scenario. When you reach a certain amount of experience, for example, if you get to 45 experience, you'll get to level 2. And you can keep going up levels until you get to level 9. And how you get those little check marks is with these cards here. These are your battle goal cards. You just hand out two to each player. He picks one that he wants to accomplish. And if you accomplish it, you get anywhere from one to two check marks, I think. And when you uh, when you get these, in order to get the the check marks, you have to win the scenario. So even if you accomplish your battle goal on these cards, they won't matter unless you guys win the scenario. So you have to win. Um, you could play anywhere from two to four characters. So even if you're playing solo, you want to do at least two characters. Um, we chose to do two characters each, just for the simple fact that there's so much content in this game, and it's a legacy style game, which means content unlocks as you play the game. So we want to get as much content out of this as we possibly can so that's why we're doing another reason we're doing two characters each because for those of you unfamiliar with a legacy style game it's basically means you kind of play through it once 
Now, that doesn't mean you play once. It means you will actually play this game, which is going to take us probably about, assuming you play once a week, and doing one snare a week is going to probably take us about a year and a half. Because there's 95 scenarios in this, in this game. Along with, we have an upgraded edition with 17 solo scenarios. So, you know, there's a lot of content. We, we've been playing for a very long time. This game is well worth So when you play it, you play for about a year and a half, and then you do whatever you want with it. We're going to probably end up tossing it. But um, also another thing about a legacy-style game, you will, the, the board will grow as the game grows. Like I know it's hard to see, but these little stickers here, we put these stickers on this board. We've completed certain events, certain scenarios, and it tells us, and it unlocks new scenarios that weren't available before. Um, also, with your characters, you will play this until you achieve a personal goal. A personal goal is something that this character is trying to achieve. And when this character achieves what's ever on this personal goal, that character is going to retire. Which means they go away and a whole new character is unlocked. There's 15 other characters besides the original six. I believe it's 15. The original six that we um, started with. So there's the six original that you started with. And there's like 15 more of these, I think, or something like that. There's, there's a lot more of these. But you can't unlock those characters until certain events happen in Gloomhaven where your character retires. And you can see there's more stickers up here. You're going to put stickers up here. I think there's, there's, there's like a spot for a sticker down here. But okay, we haven't unlocked that yet. There's a there's their secret envelopes which again because it's a lazy style game we won't unlock until certain events happen. Until, until the story tells us to go ahead and do it. But there is one envelope that says, <coughs> open this when you feel you deserve it. We're not sure what that's about, but... Yeah, there was a secret envelope at the bottom of the tray. So, for those of you watching this, underneath your black insert tray that comes with the game, this, underneath this tray, is another envelope. And we don't know when to open that or what the deal is with that yet. So you can see there's a lot of content. It's going to take you a long time to play the game. You definitely have to be committed. You have to get a if you if you have to be get a good group of friends, and you know because once you start this game, you aren't going to want to stop. It's very addicting. It's got a lot of elements. It's got the legacy element. It's cooperative. It's a fantasy setting. It's a dungeon crawl. Um, it's a tactical miniatures game because you put your little minis on these tiles, and there's going to be enemies. Um, you just got all kinds of things going on. You got a little bit of deck building going on here. Um, you got a little bit of role playing here because every one of these playmats comes with a story for the character. So that's nice. And it tells you a race and a class. So this is the Inox Brute. Inox is the race, Brute is the class. And then it's got a portrait and then your backstory. And what's neat about this game, too, a lot of these races. I've never heard of. I think they're all original. I've been playing games for many, many, many years. And it isn't your typical, okay, you're elf, you're dwarf, you're ogre, you're orc. It's not like that at all. These have a lot of different kinds of races. Like, what's one of your other characters here? What's this thing? Just show the camera what's what it, that is. This is like. Hold an, it up, so kind of like this. This is like an orchid spellweaver. Yeah, orchid would be the race, spellweaver would be the class. And that's another thing, too. It gives you backstory on like your race and your class. Right. More detail into your race. And you got a nice portrait, a nice, n nice artwork. Class. And again, like, I mean, even look at the classes: spellweaver, brute. You know, it's not your typical fighter or wizard. It's just a little different. It gives you that nice element of okay, cool. This isn't the same old, same old fantasy that we're all used to. Which is fine. I mean, we all love wizards, dwarves, and stuff. But it's nice to have these different races. Like, so this is another one of my characters. This is a human scoundrel. You know, and then we've got a vermling mind thief. 
you know, these are the four characters that we're, we're starting off with that we chose. Just purely random. We didn't know really... I mean, it, it tells you in a scenario what the six are, but we don't know what they do. So we just said, let's pick these four and just go with it. So that's what we did. And some of the races you can actually play as are actually enemies, which seems pretty cool. Because just in Scenario 3, we actually fought some... Inoxes and my character is actually an Inox. Right, because in this game, we're a group of mercenaries. That's what you are. You're mercenaries. So you're not good and you're not evil. You're just kind of in it for the money or the glory, whatever you want. But these pers not only does your backstory help you decide what kind of a character you are, but then you have your personal goal, which will decide what kind of a character you are and what you're trying to achieve. Now, the stuff, unlike the battle goal, if you achieve things during the scenario on your personal goal, that counts. That still adds up. Like, let's say it's kill a bunch of elite enemies. If you kill a couple of elite enemies, that counts towards your personal goal. Unlike the battle goal. Like, if you had to do that for a battle goal and you failed, you wouldn't get it. But if and you pass, the personal you goal, if you complete that, that's what will let you retire. And when you retire you can do whatever it says to do at the bottom of your personal goal. Yeah, usually it's unlock new content or another character. So we're yeah. not real we haven't retired anybody yet, so we're not even a hundred percent. It'll have sure. like backstory at the top about the personal goal. Right. Then under it will be a line and then under that line will be kind of your show you objective. One. But and under your objective will be what you do after yeah, you see this is the story this is the what you have to do, and this the is goal. what this is what the what it unlocks, what happens. Yeah. And the number in the lower left, I'm not. I just think that's just not 100% positive what that number in the lower left does, if it does anything. So, if you know, tell us. But yeah, you got the title of your goal, your little story, the objective, and what it unlocks. Now the playmat though, I know we're kind of going over the place, I told you we're not professionals, this is only our second video and we're just going to tell you about this game that we're going to end up doing. On, on, your, on your player mat, you've got a portrait of your character, your, your class, which is Mind Thief, and your deck size. Now like my son says, you get to add new cards, but you have to take away cards. This deck size is 10. You always have to have 10 cards in your hand. So if you level up and get a level 2 card, and you want to add it to your deck, then you gotta get rid of a level one card. So you'll still only so that's where your deck building comes in. You'll still have choices on what you want to add or take away to your deck. Then it gives you a brief run of the turn. You know, it, you can do long rest or short rest. Um, just just read these when you get your game, and we will tell you about this when we play, or just before we play. Cause we're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna do too much of it right now. And you have, you know, just a reminder here, what your level is and what your starting hit points is, but you keep track of it on these dials, which also come in a box. I don't know if we told you that. This will keep track of your health, and this will keep track of your experience. And this just tells you what they are right here, and then you adjust it with these dials. Then it has a little space for conditions. Now you can get conditions like you can get immobilized, you can, you can get um, wounded, you can get poisoned, um, muddled, strengthened, there's all kinds of little um, conditions that can happen to and you. And whenever you complete a scenario, or at least leave a scenario, you will reset all of your experience to zero, and you will reset your health according to what it says right here. Yeah, on, on, the, on the bottom here is your health. And if you didn't know, depending on your level, if you say if you're level one, this this is your level, and this is how much health you would have if you were that level. So if you were level one and an orchid spellweaver, you would have six health. And he's only got a deck size of eight. You see, the mind thief has a deck size of ten. So he starts off with less cards than I do, and he will always have only eight cards. 
So, again, making the characters a little bit unique, a little bit different from each other. Now, if you look here, just to show you this really quick, um, this is a little character tray that comes with um, you get from Broken Token. You want to get some kind of an insert because there's just a ton and ton of components. But with the trays out, it really helps keep everything organized, everything neat. So if you guys are wondering what this stuff is, it's from Broken Token. You know, it holds all your things. I would look into that or some other kind of an insert or any, any way you want, but you're going to need to organize your stuff. Now, we keep talking about retiring. Now, I know what you're thinking. It's like, oh, why do I want to work my guy up to fifth level and then have them retire and start back at level one? Well, you don't. I know it's hard to see, but there's a track down here called Prosperity. That's the prosperity of the town of Gloomhaven. And when you reach certain benchmarks, that's what your new character will start at. So let's say I have a fourth level character, but he retires. I'll start my new character, and let's say we're at level three. That character will start at level three. And you'll pick perks, and you'll pick level ability cards according to whatever the prosperity level is in Gloomhaven. So the higher the prosperity, and you reach these little benchmarks, the more powerful your starting character is going to be. And we kind of figure if we if we do 60 scenarios, we'll probably end up going through at least three characters each. But remember, we're doing two characters a piece, so we're actually, as the two of us, we're probably going to go through three, six, nine, 12 characters at least. So there's lots of... It, it keeps the game from getting boring or repetitive or just having the same guy. You actually, just when you get used to one guy and he retires, now you're going to have to pick a new guy, look at his ability cards, and you're going to learn how to how, how, see how he works. And that makes it fun and exciting. It keeps it going. It keeps it fresh, which is really, really neat. So retirement is not a bad thing. Retirement unlocks new content, like we said, and you get to pick a whole other character. And in fact, let's say I'm playing this guy, okay, and I retire him. I can pick an Anox Brute again. I can pick the same character or the same class and race, but I'll pick a different character sheet and start them at the level of the prosperity and pick different perks. Because you name your character, so it'd be just a. I mean, you, once this is unlocked, anybody can choose to play him, but he just won't be the same guy. Let's say his name is Ralph. You'll pick another Inox Brute and you can name him whatever. He'll just be a different Inox Brute. It won't be the exact same one. If that makes any sense. It probably doesn't. But basically what's going on is if you, if someone retires their character and then wants to be in, let's say if the Mind Thief retires their character and wants to be a Inox Brute, they can because the Inox Brute is unlocked. But well, as long as he was retired, though. If somebody else is playing him, you can't play him. But, um, if he was retired at level, let's say, 6, and he had all level 6 cards and powerful cards, you would begin at the level of the prosperity and be a totally different person. Right. So retiring is a good thing. You also have, which comes with the game, a party sheet. The party sheet, you got the name of your group, we're the FNS crew, stands for Father and Son Crew. Um, I don't really do the locations, I don't really understand that. So again, if you want to put that in the comments, what the location means on the party sheet, you're really 100% on that. Then you got some notes you want to keep, and then they'll have achievements. Like your party will include achievements. Now, even if characters retire, you still stay the same party because we're mercenaries like we said so some will come some will go but you're still the same party and then you have this thing here it's called reputation the higher your reputation is the cheaper items are to buy in Gloomhaven the lower the reputation is 
the more expensive items are to buy in Gloomhaven. Because we said, you're not good, you're not evil, you're just neutral. When events come up, like city events and road events, that's when you're going to kind of choose your path. These are city events and these are road events. You want to hope the road event? So these happen in Gloomhaven. And these, ha these happen when you go to a scenario from Gloomhaven. Right, so when you go from Gloomhaven to any one of these scenarios. I know, again, I know it's hard for you guys to see. We'll f fix things as we get better at filming. But, yeah. And what these will do, they'll give you a story and then choices. And depending on your choice, you can choose to help somebody or you can choose to take their stuff, man. So you can be evil or you can be good or you can just mix it up. Sometimes you feel like a nut, sometimes you don't. You know, so sometimes you can choose the good path maybe in the city, but out on the road where nobody's looking, because there's a city guard here in Gloomhaven, where nobody's looking, maybe you can rob people. You know, it just depends on your choice. And then different, depending on your choice, you might get prosperity for Gloomhaven, you might get better or worse reputation, you might find um, items. I mean, it, it, that's what's really cool about this game. It's, a, it's an engaging, continuing story. And you get to choose paths. That's why we said there's 95 scenarios, but we don't think you play all 95 scenarios because depending on the path you take, good or evil, you know, you'll play those scenarios. If you choose evil, you'll play this set of scenarios. If you play good, you, you'll do this set of scenarios. And so. normally, when you resolve a city event, good stuff happens, and when you resolve a road event, bad stuff happens. At least that's the way it seems so far with us. I mean, we're only going, we've only done three scenarios. So that's just kind of the way it seems right now. But yeah, he's, he's right. From what we understand, it, that's what it seems to be. Like, but also, <coughs> some good stuff can happen through, some like okay stuff can happen through events. For example, see this right here? The Burning Mountain. We actually unlock this scenario through a road event. Right, well, we'll talk about that in one more minute. Okay, so we told you it's a legacy game. We told you it's cooperative. We told you it's a dungeon crawl, a tactical miniatures game. We told you inside the box, you get your player, ma your character mat, you get your your ability cards, you get your modifier cards, you get your little tokens, you get your character sheets. Um, we told you about retiring, depending on the prosperity, what your new character will start at. Um, we told you about your battle goals. You'll always choose two of these before every scenario. We showed you, you get a party sheet, and that just comes with a base game. It doesn't come in little boxes. Um, there's also this thing here. This is an element board. It has a round, there, there's, a, there's a round marker that we have. Um, it's this little thing. And, and it keeps track of your rounds, but it even says in the book most of the time you won't keep track of rounds But anyway, there's your round marker or your, your round tracker and then you have these different elements you got fire ice wind earth light and night and Let's say I'm going to go and show them you kind of hold it angle. Let's say if you oh, use <laughs> this Don't worry about it. If you use this card fire instead of being it, Fire will become strong. At the end of the round, you must reduce all element strength. To it what? What's that called? To waning if they're strong. If they are waning and it's the end of the round, they go back to inert. 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 And sometimes. Now hold on. Slowly roll just a little bit. Now this card allows him to create the fire. He cannot use the fire on the turn he created it. But so if he goes early, one of the other group can use that element if it's on their card. To it, it usually strengthens their card. So that's another reason why we're doing four characters because to get the most out of these elements. And this is kind of a big deal. Um, these elements can really enhance a, a card. Like he's about to tell you right now. And also, you can see this symbol means you need to consume the element. 
Well, you don't need to, but you can. Let's say you consume fire. You will gain, you will wound the enemy as long as, as well as do all of this. Right, you'll add one of these conditions. And what wound does is every, at the start of every round of that enemy, they'll take an automatic damage. So that's a good thing to have, but... Enemy or ally, anyone, can take damage because of wound. Right, but for that card, you know. Yeah. And this symbol means you can consu yeah, consume better. any element. And we know it's hard to see. It's hard to see. We so know. if, like, fire and... So if, like, fire and light are strong and grass... Earth. Earth is waning. If somebody else wants to use like light, you can just use the gra the earth and spare their... So in other words, what we're saying is if you use these elements on your abilities, it makes using the abilities more powerful. But the enemies can do it too. Enemies can consume, can create elements and consume elements to make their attacks more powerful. So like this card says, attack two, range three. But if you consume any element, you get plus one attack and gain experience. But you only get that plus one attack and gain experience if you consume an element. So someone's gotta create it, and then you've gotta use it. So working together to do this, it, it, it's pretty important. It's a little complicated, because you got to get to learn your characters, and learn your abilities, but once you do that, it becomes pretty powerful. So that's the element board. You want to make the elements, then use the elements and enhance your abilities. Now, I keep having this deck out. In Gloomhaven, you're allowed to purchase and sell items. And the items, you know, they'll do things like during your movement add jump, which means you can, because you, when you play, you can't pass through enemies. You know, when you're going from tile to tile, let's say he's an enemy, I can't pass him, I gotta go around him, or something like that. Or if there's an obstacle on this board, you can jump over. There's, um, but during your turn, before like, I heal three it's self. It's like moving through it. You can't just move here, then move here, but only take one move. Right, right. And you cannot end your turn on top of something, whether it's an enemy, an ally, or an obstacle. Right, you have to have a space. But these are just item cards. Um, they're very useful. You can see this is, this is the title of them, a little artwork, how much they cost, what their ability is, and then you have, the, then you have these little symbols down here, like you like can have one feet, one armor, one helmet, two hands, you know, your usual stuff. And then you've got these symbols. I know it's very hard to see. I understand that, but this is an exhaust. So when you use this, you can use it once until it becomes unexhausted. Then you have cards that, if I can find one, that have a lost symbol. Now lost is when you use it once, it goes away for the scenario. Unless there's some way to bring this back, but there's very few ways to bring back lost cards. Usually, usually. See, with our, like the only way we have used and know to recover lost card, lost items is with cards like this one. See, this one says, recover all of your lost cards. So if you lose this card, you can use this card to gain it back. But this card would also be lost. So it's only like a one-time use. But yeah, these are items you can buy in Gloomhaven. So, and you get starting gold, so you do start with some items. You start with 30 gold. And there are items that are recommended for you to purchase. And that's what we did. For example, like for the brute, his recommended items are these boots of striding and this minor power potion.
no minor healing potion but you can also buy items when you get enough gold and you can add them to your deck depending on the symbol below if you already have like a helmet you couldn't get these and also now how do you get more gold to get more gold when enemies die they will drop a when you defeat enemies they will drop a token that looks like it's called this, a loot token a loot token on their hex these are the hexes they if a character stands on that stands and ends their turn on that loot token they will obtain the loot token or some cards will say loot one that will mean you can loot all loot token within so let's say i'm here and there's a loot token here and there's a loot token here you use a card that says loot one you get all the loot yeah all the loot within one hex of you yeah and then at the end of the scenario there's a conversion table in the rule book telling you how much the gold is worth depending on the scenario level so right now um, for every one of these a character has at the end of the scenario you get two gold per loot token but and then the scenarios as a win condition where when you win as a reward you might get more gold either split it as a party or just everybody gets a certain amount of gold again it's a lot of variables a lot of read your cards read the scenarios there's a lot going on I know we're kind of all over the place we're babbling a little bit we understand that we just hope you you are following along at least a little bit and realize again this is our only our second video and when we're trying hard to make it seem like a little bit of sense but that's how you get gold you gotta land on the hex you loot it or at the end you can get gold or maybe even from city events or road events you can get gold and there's actually <clears throat> something called initiative which determines which well we'll talk about that in one second all right so gloomhaven what can you do in gloomhaven you can retire your character you can level up, you can buy items, and then you can donate gold to a place called the Sanctuary. Now there's no place on here that's called the Sanctuary. It's just a temple or a hospital in, in Gloomhaven. It's in the rule book. And when you donate gold to the Sanctuary, you get these little um, blessing cards. And what these blessing cards do is give, it's like a critical hit. You get double the damage. And you get two of these to add to your deck of usually about 20 cards in here, usually. So add, adding a couple of critical hits is pretty good for and 10 goals. And when you get a blessing, when you draw a blessing, instead of having to put it back in your deck, the blessing goes away and it goes back. Yeah, it's a one-time critical hit. Yeah. I mean, you do have a normal critical in here that you can re keep, keep recycling, but the blessings are a one-time you can also have curses, which is like critical miss. Again, if you get a curse uh, and you flip yeah. it, you just avoid the attack, but then the card goes out, if it's a curse. Yeah, and also you have to donate 10 gold to the sanctuary at a time. So if you only have 5 gold, you can't donate 5 of those and expect to get... Like one blessing. Yeah. Now you donate 10 gold, you get two blessings. Yeah. And in fact, in the rule book here, this is the rule book. Um, there's a little page near the back here. Once you donate 10 gold, you get to unlock more content. Where well, I'm at 100 gold, you get to unlock more content. And then there's other goals in here, wherever it is. Yeah, right here. When you unlock certain content where you achieve 
certain achievements like up here or maybe even prosperity or whatever, you unlock more content. And this rule book, as you can see, it's pretty thick, but there's a lot of colorful illustrations. Um, I mean, it's not that bad, honestly, but I would definitely go on YouTube and Cephalar Games, the company that makes this, um, right on their website, they have this guy who does a real good overview of the game and like and like a turn or something and tells you about it. It's about both videos are about 30 35 minutes in total length, but it's very good to watch those videos at Cephalar Games before you play this. The guy who does it does a way better job than we're doing now. <laughs> so watch that video if you're confused by us before you play the game. Um, also, with so that's what you can do in Gloomhaven. So what do we got? You can retire, you can level up, you can buy and trade items, or buy and sell and items. You cannot trade items, you cannot trade. You can buy and sell items, you can donate to the sanctuary, and what else can you do? Do a city event. And you cannot level up or retire outside of Gloomhaven. Right, this is only in Gloomhaven. You have Haven. to go into Gloomhaven. Right. And this is just a blow up of the spot. Gloomhaven is actually here. But we usually just put your put our figures over here and then do the Gloomhaven stuff. So there's you know this is just a inset. Is that what you call that? It's hard to fit like all of the characters in one little spot right here. Right, right. Yeah, it's an inset map. Yeah, and well, in case if you're one ad, like I said, I know you probably can't see, but there's these little numbers. That's where you put your little. It comes with several sticker sheets. The game, and when it says unlock, you know the Burning Mountain. Um, Scenario 82. You'll just put the little 82 on the number, you know, and then you'll do your sticker. So this board is going to grow and change. We're going to get more prosperity, we're going to get achievements, and we're going to unlock scenarios. Yeah, here are some of the scenario stickers. Yeah, there's like several of these, like two or three of these. So it's cool. And you can also get stickers that look like these. With these stickers, you can actually change cards. These are called enhancements. Now, what enhancements do... Now, right now, we cannot do enhancements on our cards. We haven't unlocked the achievement for us to even use these. And these usually cost gold, a pretty amount of gold, I believe. I mean, I don't really know because we haven't locked, unlocked any. As you can see, they're all still here. And what these do is these will modify your ability cards, giving you more attack, adding on conditions like maybe you can poison the enemy, um, making your area of effects even bigger, more powerful, things like that. And you can't just put them anywhere. See, look, you see this blue dot right it's there? It's very hard for you to see, I'm quite sure. But there's little blue dots. And wherever that blue dot is where you can put an enhancement. Yeah, so... You can so if you want a plus one, you do, so this will be plus three attack, it'll be plus four attack, that's all. Yeah, or you could like create any element, or Where you could go? like, this is in my deck. Oh, okay. You could, this yeah, there's, there's is, all kinds of enhancements. and this is area of effect. What this will do is, you are the gray dot, and everyone else, and the enemies are the red dots. Hexes. The hex, the red hexes. If you stand in this position, you can attack both of those enemies. Yeah, it's an area of effect. you can put another one on here, and you can attack three enemies at once. Yeah, it makes the ability more powerful. Yeah. But we haven't even unlocked these. We don't know. They, I'm sure they cost a lot. Um, but that comes with the game, too. Put that back over there. And as far as these tiles go, there's a lot of these tiles and they are double-sided. So the maps never really get boring either. And then there's all these overlay tiles and there's more of these too and you put them on the board and it, and it makes the board kind of cool. You got like little hazards, there's traps, there's coffins you put on here and there's these big obstacle hexes and you know like lava hexes so it goes like that. So there's lots of these tiles. Now we're lucky enough that we got a space where we keep everything out because if you were to play this once a week and tear it down and set it up every week, 
that is going to be a pain in your butt. I'm going to tell you that right now. So if you're fortunate enough, maybe you own the game and you have an area where you can just keep it all laid out, keep all your stuff, you definitely want to do that. Because um, it, it, it can, there's a lot of, I mean, I'm lucky I got this, you know, I got these um, broken token trays and it all goes in the box. Which, just let me show you real quick, I know probably a lot of other people have shown you and you've probably already seen it, but... That's the size of the box it comes in. It weighs 27 pounds when it comes in the mail. And these are just those little miniature boxes we we're talking about. Your your um you know your little mini comes in these boxes. And these are the boxes that you can get your character out of. Oh fudge. All the ones I don't open that. And the ones that come in that yeah. you can get See, as that's like sealed. a starter that's do sealed. not have that seal. Right. And this is just the scenario book. And again, we haven't even unlocked these scenarios yet. There's a special way to unlock these solo scenarios. Hope you can see that. I hope I'm not screwing that up, am I? Oh, yeah, you can see it's the solo scenarios. Alright, so we talked about what you can do in Gloomhaven. We talked about what comes in the little character boxes. We showed you what the mini box is. We showed you some of the stuff that comes in the game. We told you what the game is, legacy, cooperative, dungeon crawl, tactical, deck building, role playing, all sorts. There's no dice in this game though, so if you're a dice lover, this, yeah, there's no dice. Now I know we talked about this before, and you've probably already guessed. When you do combat, let's say you have plus three to attack, this is going to adjust that by minus one, plus zero, um, you know, there's plus ones, minus two, so you're not always going to do the damage you think you're going to do. So there's your randomization, there's your chance, this takes place of the dice. Now, we keep talking about fighting and doing combat. The game comes with all these monsters. What's cool about Gloomhaven, it is a full 18 month at least campaign, assuming you play once a week, once in a week, and everything is in one box. You don't have to buy a bunch of expansions, there's not sets you have to worry about coming out. Everything is here. So that is cool. And all these little boxes are just like kind of these boxes. They've all they've got your little little enemy token in here and then they've all got their own set of ability cards. And what you do is you flip those ability cards and the monster will act according to whatever those ability cards say. We might show you this if we do a playthrough, but they're all in there. Lots of lots of enemies. Another unique thing. The enemies actually This one card here, this, 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 the way this system works, you know, these little numbers in the corner, one, two, three, four, blah, blah. That's the level of the monster. So this one card here will control monsters from level one to level eight who are living corpses. Um, they have different, and then there's elite and there's standard. Elite is the white base. No, elite. Elite is the yellow, yellow yellow base, standard is the white base. And what you do is you just take this card, you put it in a monster sleeve, let's just say level one. They're kind of a pain in the butt. Yeah. And now you got a level one living corpse. You got your standard numbers, you got your elite numbers, and it can control up to six different monsters. Because in those little red boxes I just showed you are, are, are going to be a number of stands equal to this sleeve right here. So you probably have six of these monsters out maybe. And you just put little damage tokens or condition tokens on each one of the space depending on the number that's on the little standee that's in that red box I just showed you. So it's a great, great system that this one card can control so many monsters 
using the ability deck, their own ability deck, they, they do multiple things each turn. So again, it's not static, it's not boring, it's not just, okay, they move 20 feet and they do attack plus two. It's not the way this works. They will do different things almost every turn. And then some of these stats will change. They go higher levels, so obviously they get more health, more damage. But they might start adding things like shields where they can poison you. So that all changes too. So it's really never boring. It's never the same. It always keeps growing and going. And, and it's a lot of fun. It, it really is a blast. And the monsters have their own attack modifier. And they have like card modifiers for them. And those card modifiers, um, right? They, they get their they get their own ability change. deck too. They get their own ability modifier deck too. And they have their own sort of cards that change what they do. And for those cards, it seems obvious. Um, it seems like they do everything. It would seem like <coughs> they do everything normally, but if the card like says they have movement plus zero then they'll move plus zero but if the card does not say anything about movement on it they won't move at all yeah th those ability cards on the monster will tell you what the monster is going to do this turn if it says don't move then they don't move if it says they don't attack because they might just um you know just, just shield themselves up and retaliate against you so it's cool like i said they'll do different things every turn so there's the monsters, there's the monster sleeves, we showed you the tokens, we showed you our trades that we used for broken tokens, we showed you the items, city events, road events, the minis, the dials, the sheets, the tiles, um, the board, like again, I know you can't see great, I should be over there kind of zooming in and out, I know, but we didn't do that. Uh, um, <coughs> go out and buy the game, it's spectacular, it's well worth the money. We, we played three scenarios and, well, we probably played 10 hours. Would you say at least? We had 10 hours with just three scenarios. Yeah. I mean, this game might have cost me 120 bucks with everything, including the, you know, the solo scenarios. But, you know, we, we played this it's game, really we played this game 60 times and, you know, it's three hours every time. I mean, that's a... That's that's your money's worth. Believe me. Plus, I get to spend time with my son. I mean, come on. So if you got a loved one out there, or a kid, or your friends, it, it, it's great. Yeah, it's very addicting because it's like a campaign and a legacy. So actually, it just you just complete a scenario and you're already one more. I'm gonna point this at you. So you can sit down. Okay. And this game is meant to be played once. You put, you change like the board, you write on the board. You can even like rip up cards sometimes. Yeah, we actually rip up the cards. It'll say to remove them from the game. Yeah, it'll have like a symbol of a card being ripped. And then you just rip up that card yeah. and throw it in the garbage. You don't have to do, but it's a legacy game. That's what we're doing because you know, the game's gonna take us, like I said, a year and a half to play. Like, you could I doubt get, we're gonna play it again. You could get removable stickers and, like, play it a second time, but Which why I do would have. you want to? I ordered it, but I'll probably end up selling them. Yeah, why would you want to? It would take, like, two years. Yeah, I mean, I can't... Each time you play. And, and the reason we chose to rip up our cards were, were... This is actually... I don't know if you can see these little X's, probably not at the bottom. Uh, we actually write on them in pen. Um, we write... In this book here, in pen, in, in the scenario book, we actually mark things off in pen. So we're gonna play this game. Like the only time months. we use erasable like pencil is for our right because this, this stuff changes in our... level gold XP. That stuff yeah. changes. But everything else is in pen because we plan on playing this game once. And if and, and, and I can tell you right now, we've already talked. I'll probably end up buying this game again, a whole other set. So I've got these little trays I can keep the game with, but, and the reason we don't mind ripping up our cards and running on the board and playing it once through, even though it's going to take about a year and a half, whatever, maybe even longer, 
Because there's so many other games out there. We just can't yeah. play this one game every weekend. And why would you, like, play it a second time if you already know basically the storyline, you know what's in each envelope, you know what secrets it holds? Well, it would be cool if we played with a couple other people. You know, we're playing two characters each. Yeah. If we can get two other people to play with us, and it, I think it'd be fun and exciting to watch them make the choices. Yeah. We'll read off the cards and say, hey, what do you think we should do? And let them decide. And yeah. that's kind of fun to actually, you know, watch other people play the game that has never played. So that's, that's a reason. Plus, we said you can choose good or evil. So let's say you go through it once, playing all good. Go through a second time, do all the evil choices. Yeah. And you'll unlock different content and different scenarios. So you can actually play this again. And it, and it will be like a little we're different. We're actually at a choice right now where we can trust the person we've been doing objectives for and do her objective next, or we can trust someone we found outside after we left. A member of the city guard. Who said that that person we've been helping is it's actually... kind of evil. Yeah. Or bad, or doesn't have the city's best, um, you know intentions in mind she doesn't have yeah. good intentions so speaking of let's kind of wrap this up we weren't going to really do overview of rules because i know you guys don't probably remember a darn thing we just said it's better to show you as we play but like i said we're not going to really doing playthroughs what we are going to do is the, like i said a gloomhaven journal and every scenario will be a journal entry yeah um we've already done three scenarios but the First three journal entries were lost or never. Yeah, we I kind of erased them. That's my fault. Yeah. So, what we're gonna do? Just give you a brief recap. Just catch you up. We were mercenaries in Gloomhaven at the Sleeping Lion, I think, tavern, yeah. and this female. I don't know what race she is. Maybe Valrath. I'm not even sure. Yeah, I think she's either Valrath or human. Yeah, yeah, I think she's valid. Not sure, but she showed up and said, hey, you want to make some money? Of course, we're poor. We want to make some money. So she sent us, her name is Jaxara. She sent us on a mission to the Black Barrow, which is over here. We completed it. And what was cool is then it had a linked scenario. So that means you can immediately go into the next scenario. You don't have to come all the way back to Gloomhaven. And you don't have to suffer a road event. Right, we're doing anything. I just go right into it. So we chose to do that, and then we defeated the second scenario called um, the Borrow Lair. Lair. And then we went back there. She gave us a reward, and then she told us, hey, there's these Inox in the day or forest who... Um, I don't know, ripping her she off or something. Like, yeah, she was. They're, they're ripping her off or something. So we went and kind of slaughtered them. Yeah, we I beat mean, them up. And, 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 and like he's we a, actually had to beat up, um, I think, five times our number of characters. So we, like, had this Well, sheet. they can see us now. Oh, it's yeah. We us. had, like, had this sheet. Yeah, that's just our own piece of paper. Yeah. But anyway, the um, we had to go kill a bunch of Inox, and it was tripping because he's an Inox. But we're mercenaries. He doesn't really care. He doesn't yeah. know. He doesn't know those Inox, and yeah. we ended up getting a reward. We came back to Gloomhaven, so we did the three scenarios. We came back to Gloomhaven. Now she's telling us to go to this diamond mine and get this big diamond for her. It's guarded by a bunch of vermlings. Or there's this city guard dude, where this chick, maybe a female, yeah. some female city guard person that was spying, listening to the house because we're at Jixera's house. We can go and do this. Now, these scenarios, oh, I hope you guys can see that. So we went here, did that, went back to Gloomhaven, did this. Now we're back in Gloomhaven deciding where to go. Yeah. Um, now, these scenarios, even though they're unlocked, they have requirements. So some of these we can't even go to because we, like, we haven't unlocked the achievements. If you see... This one right here, this requires I'll an achievement. they can see it. Yeah, they can see this it. This requires an achievement called water breathing. And as you can see up here, we do not have that achievement. Or is it on our party sheet? It is not on our party yeah, sheet. Yeah, because you get party achievements too. But party achievements. water breathing is a global achievement which goes up here. Oh, okay, yeah, I didn't even notice they had this global achievements and this party achievements. All right. Yeah. But anyway, the scenarios are unlocked, but we can't go to them yet. 
So even though the guard wants us to go to this one scenario over here, we can't uh, even really go there yet because there's a requirement that we don't have. So we're debating on do we want to continue to help out Jaxera or maybe do one of these other missions that are, are available. I think we can do a couple more missions that are available. But yeah, we can either do this one or this one or this one. Those are the three that are... We can do number four, number 82, or number nine. Yeah. So, this one, this one, I think it's it. All right. Not very good, of course, but yeah. we know that. I should be behind the camera kind of zooming, but I'm not. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a really, just to catch you up, I said we're going to perform mercenaries in a bar. Jack Sarah comes up, offers us work. We do the work, defeat some bandits, defeat some undead. Come back, get a reward. We like it. She tells us to do another job. Slaughter some Inox. We came back, and after we slaughtered the Inox, that's when we were like, it's kind of not cool. So we're debating on now, do we continue to help her, or do we find a way to unlock um, the scenario the guard wants us to do. Yeah. Um, so we have debated, we're have we debating on what to do with that next. And so what we're going to do from now on, this point forward, is we're going to have the the scenario set up for you with all these tiles. We're going to put out all the monsters that you see, uh, at least on the first room. Um, they link like this. I, don't know if you guys, I hope you guys can see that. <laughs> they link like this. And um, only the first room is usually seated. And there will be like a door. And we'll, we'll show you that setup. We'll give you, we'll read the introduction to the scenario. We will do the road event. We will pass out the battle goals. Then we'll probably pause it. Then we'll unpause it when the scenario is done, show you what the map looks like when we're all done. Then we'll come back to, we'll, then we'll put out this board again and we'll do with the city events, we'll do leveling up, we'll do turns about items. So it's like a journal more than an actual playthrough. And I don't know how to edit, we're not good yet we keep saying that so i hope you guys understand and bear with us um but uh if you guys want us to really do a playthrough we we, we wouldn't mind we just don't want it to be boring for you because we're playing two cards each it takes a little while to decide what cards you want to pick with um you know your churn so we, we just don't want to bore you but if you want to see it man we will gladly do it and as we talk about the rules, it'll make a lot more sense to and you. I, really, I know it doesn't make sense now. We can't really, like, tell each other exactly what we're doing. Yeah, just like, table talk. You can't be specific. If this is an enemy and, like, I'm here, I can't say, well, I'm going to move two and do four damage to this enemy. Right. We can say, I'm going to move... I'm gonna move and deal some damage to the or, enemy. Or I'm gonna take care of this guy. Don't worry about this guy. Yeah. Now the one thing we did skip, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, we, we these ability cards. Like I said, we do a hand of, um, well, whatever your hand size is, 10, 8, whatever. But, in the middle, they each have these numbers. Now you pick two cards to play per turn. That number in the middle is going to determine your initiative. And then you put that, whatever card, whatever initiative you want to go to, let's say an example 20 and 38, lower initiative, goes first. You put it on top of the, the your little two-card pile. And then everybody flips it, and that will determine who goes in what order. All four of our characters do this. And the enemies have one of those, too. But, they, but we got to do ours first, so we don't know when the enemies are going to go. So yeah. even if we're like, oh, I'm going to go early and go beat up these archers, the archers might go before us and shoot at us. Yeah. So ruining our whole plan. Yeah. So, but anyway, once you do the initiative and then you flip both cards, that initiative n number no longer matters. So just because you use this for the initiative doesn't mean you have to use this card first in your turn. You use both cards, but it doesn't mean you have to use this first. Once initiative is determined, that initiative number is now done. And then, what you, and then what the cool thing, which makes it real strategic in this game, is you have to use the bottom of one card and the top of the other in any way you want. So if I use the top of this card, I gotta use the bottom of this. Or if I and use the bottom of this, I gotta use the top of this. 
Uh, so that really depends. There's there lots of different abilities out here. Just lots. Defaults too. So you can just use the bottom default, which is move two, or the top default, which is attack two. Which you will end up doing. We've done that many times. Yeah. You because you don't want to lose the cards. The, yeah. The, the little, the little, the little card with an X in it. Man, I, I wish I was better at videotaping. Um, and once you, once you lose all your cards, you're exhausted. And when you're exhausted, you're out of the scenario. Once all the characters are on the scenario, we lose. So managing these cards, but, as long as, like, but managing these cards are very important. So, like this card, that's a big attack you're doing, but you're gonna lose this card. So you want to maybe save that for near the end when you got the boss. You know you're running out of time. Use your big attack, but you don't want to use your card in the beginning because then you'll lose it, and now you're close to becoming now you're closer to becoming exhausted. And even if three people are exhausted and there's one player left and that one player wins, oh, everyone so wins. Good. Yeah, yeah. Um all uh all um the characters all, all, all the characters have to be exhausted before we lose. Unless there's some and other conditions. So we don't know, you know, the scenario itself might say And if you get to Remember they can see it. If you get to zero health you're then exhausted too. You're also exhausted. Yeah, so there's two ways to get exhausted. You have no more cards to play. You gotta have at least two cards to play. Yeah, at least two cards to play or at least two cards in your discard pile. Yeah. Again, being unprofessional like we are, this man even tells you you have a discard side. There's a little word here that says discard. You have a lost side. These are your lost cards. And you have an active. Because some of these cards will have a persistent bonus or give you armor or whatever. But the ability cards, I mean, this, this is pretty much everything. This is what's going to take the crux of your churn. This is what's going to, you know, you got to pick two cards out of, like, let's say a hand of ten and really decide what you want to do. And depending on when you go, depending on the, when your enemy goes, you're not be able to even do what you want it to do. Your whole plans can go awry. So you have to be able to adjust as the game hits you, whereas your, your teammates might do something you don't want them to do. Because remember, you can't be specific. You can just say, I'm going to go early and try to take out those archers. But maybe he's going earlier, and he moves in front of you and blocks your line of sight. So, you know, there's you, you got to coordinate, but you can't be specific. But actually, your player player allies cannot block line of sight. So right, I'm just giving an example. If I'm, I'm just here saying. and I'm here, and there's an enemy right here, I can still attack this enemy with a ranged attack. I'm just saying that your, your ally might do something that would screw you up. Yeah, like if you wanted to move here, and you, if you wanted to move right here, and your ally moves right there, then you can't move there, and you. And your something else. Are ruined. And that's another thing too. Pretty much this game, like he said, nothing blocks on a sight, other than walls. Pretty much, you can see through obstacles. You can see through enemies. enemies you can see through allies. But um, you know. Oh. And when enemies attack, they will first try to attack the closest e enemy. Yeah, they focus. For example, if the enemy is here and I'm right here, he'll attack me. But if there are two people that are exactly close, like. the enemy, the enemy will, um attack the one with the lowest initiative. Yeah, the game does good at AIing the enemies. The the game is very well done. Okay, I thought something weird happened. Yeah. Yeah, believe me, trust me, the game and, and you gotta be a little bit honest with the enemies. You know, don't do anything don't make the enemies move someplace they really want it move. You know, pretend they're when you do the enemies, pretend they're you. And you know, do yeah. what do what the enemy would do. Don't like, don't try to fudge it. You know, like you can't make an archer. Like if you attack a ranged attack, but you're up close, you'll gain disadvantage. And what disadvantage means is you draw two cards and then pick the worst. Yeah, and you can't just make an archer if they're here and they shoot here. You can't just make them like run up here and then attack with range and get disadvantage on purpose. In fact, in fact, like a, like a, in fact, let's say I went first. I ran up to the archer. I attacked the archer. Now it's the archer's turn. The archer will actually move 
uh, if they're able to move on the ability card and then shoot so they don't get disadvantaged. They're not, yeah. they're not going to deliberately get disadvantaged. Yeah. You know, that's what I'm saying. And you can also have advantage, and that's just draw two cards, pick the best. So and advantage, archer. draw two cards, pick the best. Disadvantage, draw two cards, pick the worst. And archers are not actually, like, they don't have different things. Because what do you mean if they someone's things? here... Um, they, this one is closest, even though they would get disadvantage, they would still attack this one, yeah. instead of attacking Yeah, they're focused one. on the closest, uh, enemies focus on the closest person, that's always true. At first we were thought, well, why didn't you just shoot this person? Because there's someone in your face, you know, they're not going to let, let you shoot their friend. So it's a good ruling, actually. But yeah. they will focus, like we said, on the closest, if it's a tie, they'll go with lowest initiative. Yeah. And then if that's even tied, which has happened, just pick who gets hit at that time. Yeah. But the, 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 the game does good at controlling the, the monsters. Or like, Believe if me, they're they've not gonna... already went, then it would pick who went first. Well, yeah, it'll go by lowest initiative. It yeah. doesn't matter what when we went. But, so um, if the initiative is the same, and one person went first, yeah, yeah. and then the archer would attack that person. It's almost yeah. o'clock. All right. Well, we're getting yelled at, so we got to go. This All went right. on much, much, much longer than I wanted it to. I didn't think we would do this. I know you guys probably don't understand a darn word we said. Just tune in next week when we do the first um, journal entry. Yeah. And as we do, the, do it, we'll explain what we're doing, and you'll get a lot better. But we're just trying to let you know. Yeah. So I know we babble a lot. There's a lot better reviews out there than what we just did. Go to Cephalar Games by Isaac... Childress, I think, made this game. Brilliant, brilliant game. Buy it. Don't be confused by us. Don't let us, you know, dissuade you. Yeah. There's a lot better than we are, but when we start playing it and we start explaining what we're doing as we play it, it'll make a lot more sense to you. Yeah, this game is pretty complicated. Yeah, it's definitely not something for new. He's only 10, but he gets it. That's my son, but it is recommended for definitely a higher age. Yeah. And, and we are playing two, which makes it double complicated. It's yeah. really tough playing two characters, trust me. But that's why we don't want to film it, because we think it's going to take too long. But, yeah. you know, that's that. I know we were all over the place. Just please bear with us. Please tune in to yes. more videos. This is just the introduction to Gloomhaven. Once we start playing and we talk about what we're doing as we play it, it'll make a lot more sense to you. Like, it's kind of hard, like, if you just finish someone's turn, and, like, you know all the, and you know, like, what they're good at and what they're bad at, and then it's the next turn, and, and then it's your other character's turn, and you're like, wait, why is Yeah, you don't know how many times we grab the wrong pile, like, we'll start grabbing the wrong yeah. ability cards, grab, it, it's tough, it's, it's, it's tough. But, we, like I said, we would do it because we want to get the most out of the game because we're only going to play it probably once. Yeah. But that's it for now. We're getting yelled at from my daughter and wife. Um, We've been down here like a long time. Just yeah. keep tuning in. Trust me. Just keep tuning in. Yeah, we'll do more games like and we'll start our Pathfinder journal next week. Gloomhaven journal. Gloomhaven. <laughs> hey, he keeps calling it Pathfinder. Calling it Pathfinder. It's Gloomhaven. All right. All right. Sit down. You can't see your head. Say goodbye. All right. Bye.